Peace and love, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing today? I am your host with the most, Kush Tucker, coming live and direct in full effect with my host, Mike L. What's happening, everyone? And today, our special guest here today is God Reef. What up, y'all? Yo, yo, one, two. Yeah, it's me. Ha, what's up? <laughs> we and back. he's here today promoting his new single, D.B. Cooper. So we're going to get straight into it, y'all. I like that. Skyjacking master. Daring crime that defied both the elements and the authorities. And most of this is nothing more than a common criminal who risked the lives of 42 innocent people for $200,000. But one fact remains. Nobody knows whether D.B. Cooper is dead or alive. Thanksgiving Eve, 1971. At 2 p.m., D.B. Cooper walked into the Portland airport. Non-stop service to Seattle, I'm running the play Get up in the plane and skedaddle, I ain't rattled You can say I strayed from the cattle, what's never been done before Put my name in the rafters, talk about it after I'm in a hurry, so move, carry your one suitcase up in the terminal room I was the last nigga to sit all black in this shit A few seconds have passed up when the stewardess bitch trip Trying to make me put my bag up Hold up lady, my shit got the dynamite sticks to blow up crazily I'ma make all of my demands clear as fucking day I need four parachutes and 200k Get it the strong arm, hard on the government way Sorry hun, I had to fuck up your day I told her stay cool Just be quiet and walk away smooth If you tell these people anything I got to say, boom the big listen carried on with the service Started offering up drinks I even ordered a bourbon I know by now the pilot nervous Cause she told him the deal The FBI in Seattle gonna be holding this L The plane landed with swell No accidents and no fails Bitch, cover all of the windows I ain't trying to get killed The transaction went well Without a shot or a yell I let every passenger go Without a sound on the trail But I ain't done yet We feel we get back in the air It's just me and three fools I'm standing back by the stairs I got the money in the parachutes Stack in the chair, I strapped up, kicked the latch off, but jumped the fuck out of there. Out of there. And I questioned why he would be hot. That was hot. That was hot. That was hot. That's good storytelling. That's, That's great totally storytelling. I totally got pulled in. I did too, man. Yeah, it like, it totally <laughs> reminded me of like some um, Eminem. Yeah. But like, mixed with Rock Kim. Man. Some Rock Kim no, and Eminem. That. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, like style, like, um, I felt the urgency. The yeah. music, nah. The yeah. music was perfect. Oh, I yeah. felt the urgency. He felt the urgency in it. <laughs> yeah. I felt the urgency. He said he blacking the windows out. <laughs> yeah. I ain't trying to get killed. Nah, I feel it. I feel it. And what was that? Can I ask? Was that Unsolved Mysteries at the beginning? Yeah. Um. So yeah, that I sampled that uh, from Unsolved Mysteries. That did a uh, episode about that, which is an actual story. Okay. This this was like the first U.S. hijacking. Okay. Ooh. Um. First U.S. hijacking on a plane. Yeah. In yeah. America, like damn, in, in that's tight. So where yeah. was it? It was going basically from Seattle to where? Uh, yeah, it was a flight to Seattle. He caught it in uh, uh, what does it say? The Portland Airport. Oh, the Portland Airport. Okay. And, okay. And, um, so he hijacks the plane. So I didn't really detail the last real part because you have to wrap the song up. But uh, what what ends up happening is when he gets back on the plane and they fly back, he they are flying towards Mexico. He tells them to fly towards Mexico. Yeah. And uh, he actually jumps out at uh, when they're like 10,000 feet. With a parachute? Yeah, with the parachute and all the money attached to him. <laughs> and he jumps out into the well, water. Hold on, hold on. Back up, back. Where'd the money come from? From the FBI. So he, so he, so, he, so remember, this is the first hijacking. So they have no technology, no surveillance to, te oh, to te uh, detect a bomb or anything. So he, sh he has a, a, a makeshift bomb. In this suitcase mm -hmm. that he got, he got one like uh, what do they call it, attaché or attaché, whatever they call that bag. Yeah, uh, he has one of those, and uh, uh, the lady tells him to move it, and that's when he he slips her a note and says, "I have explosives in the bag." Da 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 da, and he shows her. If there's so the video, I have a video that I put out on. It's on my TikTok. It's on uh, also my Instagram. Um, you can go check that out. Arif Khomeini, A R E E F. K H O M E I N I. That's the Insta. You know what I'm saying? The videos on there or the um, the TikTok. I T Z T H K G O D A R E E F. It's the God of Reef. I got the video on there. But yeah, he shows the the the, the, uh, the lady the bomb, and she flips out like, oh snap! Like <laughs> that's why you said sorry to like fuck this, up your day, Miss. Yeah, yeah like but I need that 200k. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, on some but now, see, like, hey, hey, what I, year did this happen? This was in 71. Yeah, that's that's why 200K sounded like a lot. I mean, it, it was a lot back then. That's like 2 like, million Because, see, like, I listened to the song last night, and, like, I found it interesting. I was like, as I was listening to it, because I've never heard the story before, really. Mm. You feel me? So you put me on game to something like new. I'm going to be looking for that Unsolved Mystery. Yeah, not nah, totally. Whatever. So, like, when you mentioned 200K in the song, I was just like, dang, why he go so low with the money? Like, why did he go to try to steal 200K? But it made sense. 71. In 1971, nigga, 200K was like a million fucking yeah, dollars. Yeah, it was a herd of <laughs> yeah. So they, like... So continue the story. So yeah, basically, yeah, he uh he gets the uh he tells her, yo, t- let the pilot know they uh, you know, when we land in Seattle c- to contact the FBI let, and I want two hundred thousand uh in cash, you know, on, on the like on the landing when we get there. Crispy bills. <laughs> and, uh so they do that. They notify the, the FBI, all of that, and um, no one on the plane knows what's going on. He tells him, "Don't alert anyone on the plane, or I'm gonna detonate this thing, and nobody gonna make it." <laughs> and so they're like, "Okay, we we you we are at your your command." Yeah. So boom, they land the plane. They don't, they don't tell the people why it's a delay. They're waiting for the <laughs> FBI to bring all the money in. FBI bring the money in. At first, he, they, he exited everybody off the plane. Boom, so nobody knows what's going on. He had to have known too that they could collect 200k. Quicker than they could a bigger amount. Yeah, no, for sure. Because this has to be planned. So yeah, so yeah. you you cut the song off early. So yeah, it was that interview was uh, allegedly his niece who remembers her uncle coming back home from this. She says he survived. the The public and the FBI said they don't know what happened because none of the bills yeah. ended up in rotation or nothing. Yeah. But that lady on the interview said that he actually survived and came back home and was. On the verge of like that, cause like he was all busted up from jumping out the plane. Cause mm. one of the parachutes mm. defaulted. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. Uh, so where's two hundred k went? Then, so like nobody it's, knows. It's basically a mystery. Like they don't really That's know if the he mystery alive. Of did he make it? Where they found one bill. A, a child found a bill in the eighties. On uh, there was on the uh, on the beach somewhere, uh, and they found one of the bills that was uh, marked. And that was the only bill that That's ever crazy. came up in rotation. That's kind of like some, um, what's her name? The lady that flew through the um, Bermuda Triangle. like Yeah, like on some Amelia Earhart. Yeah, yeah Amelia like Earhart, like, he just kind of disappeared. Oh, That's like, when she flew through the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, and she disappeared. Yeah, like, I guess she went through a storm. You know, them storms, that should create portals, like, around that, like, certain area. Yeah, where's like, a bunch of crystals in the ocean over there? Yeah, not totally. So, so it's, it's like. It's like a whole, like a whole vortex or something over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Damn, that's wow. crazy. D.B. Cooper. See, yeah, so, yeah, D.B. Cooper. That's an interesting, very that's interesting exactly. story, bro. So, yeah, um, uh, I forgot to mention this part, too. So, yeah, when they when they get the, yeah, they get everybody off the plane. He keeps just the pilot, the steward is him, and a co-pilot, I guess. And uh, they get the money. Boom. So, yeah, one of the things, defects, he jumps off. So, yeah, like I said, they were going towards Mexico, and he jumped off into the Washington National Forest, they say, and disappeared well okay. the fact that he opened up a like 747 yeah so door? that so yeah that that's, part the, that's the, the door yeah. yeah that was the first model of that time so it uh it was the first one with <laughs> the door in the like back with an emergency exit like. <laughs> yeah they, they didn't they didn't have that until then so he had figured out the technology somehow no nah, who, who, he, he studied on that yeah he nah, studied he his oh yeah he, his bro. exit yeah, he knew how much money to ask for so they could get back to the air soon. And uh, he wasn't—he probably wasn't alone. Chances are he yeah. wasn't alone. Uh, like I said, the lady said she was a she was his niece. She remembers him coming home with her other uncles. Yeah. And so, so yeah, help. Somebody picked him up and all of that. He's a oh, true successful true. criminal. He got away without a trace. Like yeah. Hey man, and, that, uh, that's the whole point of doing these type of things. Plus, they would never want to get admit, away with it. Plus, they would never want to admit to him winning. So it's easier just to say we never found him. Yeah, exactly. He died. Maybe die. he's dead. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> he's you, gone. Do you see him spending money? No. Yeah. It's easy to say the money never. So we won. Circulation. It's he got the money, say. but he died. Yeah, you we know. won. But who? But who? Not definitely. That, who that got the tell, who got the legend? You know, I you know I like the legend. You know? Nah, that's dope. Yeah, that's dope. Nah, that's, hey, no, no, great song. Great song. Yeah. Great, song. Great, song. Yeah. Great song. So yeah. like when you when you was you at home watching that episode and you were just like automatically like um so I gotta make a story out of this. Like tell me like the process of the that, song. Yeah, like, that's man. that was the the latter half of what happened. And initially uh I I'd heard uh D B Cooper mention on the MF Doom verse. Shout okay. out to Doom, rest in peace. Yeah, yeah rest uh, in peace. Uh, MF Doom, man, legend. Love and, his music. Uh, so I said, Well, who was he talking about? 
MF Doom, he's like D.B. Yeah. Cooper. I'm like, Man, I love that, the beauty right, of the culture of music. So I started looking it up, and uh, I found a couple of episodes on yeah. YouTube, and then I found the Unsolved Mysteries episode, and I said, oh, because I was a fan of Unsolved Mysteries. Mm -hmm. which And this was a, a catalyst to a bigger project I had, which is online now. It's called Beyond a Reef, if you're familiar with the Beyond Belief series in 2000, which was kind of like a little brother of Unsolved Mysteries. Correct. Yeah, correct. They'll tell you uh, a bunch I like of that stories, one actually a little but then you had to figure out which one was real and which one wasn't. So all of my joints was based on true events. So I, I have a project that's on Bandcamp, Beyond a Reef, B-E-Y-O-N-D-A-R-E-E-F dot Bandcamp dot com. It's called Beyond the Reef. It's uh, and it's structured like an episode. Of Don't Unsolved hesitate Mystery, to wait. So. Go get that now. Yeah, yeah go get check that now. That out, man. It's a good listen if you're a hip hop fan. That's like, a story right there yeah, in nah, itself. Nah, 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 nah. He's made saying. a he made a whole album based off real facts and true stories. Yeah. Like real encounters. Not for real. Yeah, it's especially for my eighties baby. Cooper one is dope, man. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah, the, how the episodes <laughs> was. Now to me, that's real hip hop, man. Storytelling, even if it's not necessarily your story, because shit, back in twenty twenty when me and the Reef was recording. Um, I had made a song called Frankie Lyman, like detailing that whole story, like the movie of Frankie Lyman, but really like writing it from, I was I write, I wrote my verse from his perspective. You I got know? you. No, I got you. Because like, you can use that medium to tell a good story. Yeah. And you can tell it differently than if you told it in film and or sometimes me, or anything else. How my process worked with that one, I heard the beat first, and it just made me think of Frankie Lyman's story. Like, I thought about the movie. Because mm -hmm. that's how my brain works. Like, sometimes when I watch a movie, I might think of a beat or a song or a verse. And then when I'm working on music, I might think of a yeah. movie. Yeah, like the Beatle inspired music. a verse for me. Like, yeah. uh, shout out to V Love, by the way, I forgot to mention. He was the one that produced that beat. Um, I linked up with him in the studio, and he was, he was playing it off the machine. I'm like, yo, who got that? This is like my first time meeting him. Yeah. yeah. Um, but this dude is actually, you know, a legend in the game. He worked with uh, In Living Color and Kid and Play and all them. Oh, that's in the dope. 90s, so. yeah, that's classic stuff. Um, <laughs> I was yeah. born in Living Color. Yeah. So yeah, he he was uh, he was a back he was in the background dancing and all of that. But he was still uh, heavy in the game as far as like the the b boy culture and all of that. He's been mm -hmm. around the world and stuff. So yeah, he he laced me with that and he just brought out the story. I was like, this fits. Yeah. What I'm trying to tell, like about DB Cooper, it's kind of dark, you know. So you already like, had like the, like a concept already written out, and then you heard his beat, and you was like, "Ooh, that, that that's next. when the rhyme came." I had the idea of what I wanted to, yeah. what I wanted to write about, but but yeah, the, the rhyme that, that came beat pulled heard, the real yeah, verse out, I pulled, like it nah, pulled the meat of the matter out of it. Nah, yeah. we do the same thing. Yeah, no, nah, totally. No, nah, it, it was literally perfect, though. Yeah, it was crazy. I'm, too, I'm real like, judgmental. See, I'm real. Let me say this: I'm real judgmental of hip hop. Yeah, because of coming through so many eras. Of I it. am too. You feel me? Yeah, and I told so, you me too. So a I lot am. of times you bobbing your head, and you're listening, and you're like, okay, the music is good, the lyrics is kind of there, um, but it seems kind of cliche. Yeah. But that totally, I was like, oh, I was like, what the fuck is he talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the title caught me first. DB Cooper. Yeah. Then it started in, and I'm like, yeah. okay. and I love songs with intros like that, like yeah. where it's like a documentation, like somebody speaking, like it ain't just like a regular person. It yeah. gives it more cinematography. More contra like, I think yeah. I think it's a contrast thing. I like the contrast because yeah. that's, that's what I like to hear from like <laughs> listening to Wu Tang and Mob Deep and all them. Yeah, yeah. that's and what even they the make dog pound because they, they sample samples. stuff from like 36 yeah. Chambers and all that. Like, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it lends credibility. To what yeah. you're about to talk about. No, totally. It leads to like, credibility to it. And it puts people on game about stuff like they had no idea about what was going on in the world because that time is so far distant now, 71. Yeah. That's 50 years ago. Feel me? Like, a lot of people, like how this generation works now, a lot of people ain't never seen Beetlejuice. And that was made in 92. Right. Like, yeah. that's not too old. That's 30 years ago. <laughs> so it's like, it's like the, the reference for stuff. Like, we can't lose the giving validation and props to like the forefathers of like hip hop and the culture and the music. No, know? totally. And stay down with good storytelling. Yeah. Because totally. It, you know, good storytelling. Like even if it ain't your story, like feel me, is if you could tell it in a dope way, like it's it's hip hop, like it's it's tight. No, totally. They, they might want to make a movie out of that. Now they you use your album. If they made a D B Cooper movie, they could totally use your song for that. <laughs> yeah, not, and I, you know? <laughs> I got mad because they did. Netflix did a documentary real? on DB Cooper. No, I'm talking about yeah. a movie though. Like, yeah, no, real yeah movie? if a movie comes out, then yeah, I want somebody. Yo, like they got to like, hey, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, and, um, and and that's the thing for where like now you can pitch like, man, I could write a whole album for y'all actually. 
and I ain't got to record or rap every verse, but y'all can find whatever other other artists y'all want. But I can put it together for you. But I can put it together because I already got the first song ready. Yeah, I got the first song. So y'all know I could do it. Yeah. Exactly. And and you know I understand the tension. I understand the emotion in it and all of it. Oh, God. No, no. I already know my body of work from my previous things from what y'all hearing, so it shouldn't be that hard to make a decision on it. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. And that's how you network, man. man. That's how you really get out <laughs> no, there. Totally, totally. I mean, expand like your consciousness, expand like your your field of like people that's in your circle. Feel me? Nah, 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 nah. Excellent song, excellent song. Excellent I know we song. cut it short, but that's just how we do it when we first start yeah. off. Oh no, yeah, yeah, you got the rhyme part out. Yeah, I was just saying, yeah, the interview at the end it was kind of crazy too. Like, but it also leaves it open for number two because you say like you didn't really like feel me finish telling them. Yeah, exactly, you know. Um, like, it's still open. Like, you can make a whole new song. Someone else can, you know, pick up off. where I left off and, yeah. and figure out some more that I didn't know or some parts I le- that I no, left totally. out. totally. You know? Like, that'll be fire. Well, you yeah. got my mind awake this morning. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And that's, that's to me, what yeah, art should do. Definitely some folders should in wake the blunt. you up. Yeah, yeah, def- yeah. definitely. What's up, man? Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> you, man. For real. Good wake and bake song. <laughs> well, I got something I'm going to look for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for real. Yeah. I'm go to YouTube, I'm go to Netflix, and be like, "Oh, DB Cooper." Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, the details of it, you know, now with the forensics and all the, they know more about what happened and how they slipped up. So it's crazy. So he was just ahead of his time. Yeah, basically, oh, man. Usually, exactly. people that get away with shit like that or just even attempt it, like mm-hmm. those are the real life livers, man. The real risk takers, man. Like. I applaud D.B. Cooper. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. He rolled them I, dice, yo, man. I always tell hey, people man. when I perform, like, I'll be like, I'm not saying he wrong or he right. I'm just yeah. documenting yeah, the yeah, story. You know, it's an I American told. story. I'm applauding the his, fact that he went for his. I ain't saying that what he, he did, his, like the yeah. action was right. Him blowing, get, like, feel me? But the fact that, like, he was willing to take a risk. He ain't, and, like, that could be, you can modify that to your own life. Like, you waiting on taking that risk on applying for that business. Like, nigga, roll the dice on that. Very yeah. like, yeah. Feel me? You if you're gonna gamble learn. on somebody, gamble on you. Yeah, all you can do is learn. Yeah, that's it. You can't oh, really yeah. fail unless you say, "Well, I'm gonna try again." Yeah, you know, you could do. So it it's as cold as it can be out here in Los Angeles right about now. Man, Where can LA. people find your beanies at right now? Yo, um, I got them on my person. I do a uh, open mic called Bananas. Uh, shout out to Bananas Network, my man Verbs. That's in Lamert Park. Yep. Every third Verbs. Tuesday section. Uh, we do have products there. We have t-shirts. Um, those are my uh, signature God of Reef logo beanies. Um, I got T-shirts also, uh, uh, bananas T-shirts. Uh, they got hats. Uh, whatever you're looking for, I've I've seen hoodies. You know, uh, you can contact me again on the on the Insta Reef Comani, and um, yeah, we go from there. I reach out, deliver it to you straight up. You know. Yeah, and if you were artist, you know, performing anything, you got a band, you um do spoken word, poetry, hip hop, um, R and B, you know, the Yeah, Netflix definitely pull up. All yeah. y'all man, pull up. Um, it's over there in Lamert Park on what days? Every third Tuesday of the, of uh, every month. Um so yeah, uh, we're opening back the uh opening up the doors again. Um we should create a better crowd. What, what crowd. day would that be this month? Just so that. Uh, so this see. month uh, was February twentieth. Okay, good. The twentieth. Okay. Everybody, um, mark that February twentieth. Yeah, February the 20th. flyers will be out. Uh, I'm gonna tag my man. I'm gonna tag y'all in them, you know, and, and circulate them so people can see. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So. And what time does it start? Uh, it's from eight to eight to one. We actually added another hour on because we indoors now, so we got it. We was cutting it at twelve, but now we. Yeah, throw the party on a little bit longer. You know what I mean? So yeah, no, definitely for sure. Give people sure. more speaking time. Yeah, more um, show time, man, so they can shine. So yeah, I mean, um, you know, that's been 15 years in running. Um, I'm I've been a part of what like half of that, and then you know the last three or four hosting. Uh, with uh with verbs, shout out to verbs is the homie. You can find him on Instagram, and um. Yeah, there's a couple notable names and been up, up up there, you know, Kendrick Lamar, uh, Doja Cat. There's a video circulating of her performing inside. Um, oh, that's tight. Yeah. yeah, yeah people love there. Doja Cat. Yeah, she's, she's popping right now. Um, but come out to perform. Come out to also support. 
Yeah, yeah. For real. even if you um too shy or anything to perform, you ain't really got no content or no material yet. Come out, support people, man. Yeah, yeah you see how it shake hands you know? and rub elbows with people yeah. that's already got the chops for it. That's already hitting the stage. See what it looks like. Yeah. If if you're a vendor, if you got some type of uh food that you're trying to uh, serve, you can talk to uh, Ben Caldwell. He's the uh the property uh dude that he runs it. You know, so absolutely you know, holler at him. You do some business with him, he'll, he'll do business with you back. <laughs> sure like I always that. say to people, you know, holler at me, I'm going to talk back, man. <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah. So is this just a, a single, or is this part of a whole album? So yeah, no, nah, yeah, this is uh, uh, this is the second track off of the Beyond the Reef project. So it's, uh, it, like I said, it's it's structured like a, a Unsolved Mysteries episode. So it's one, it says one song, but it's like 12 minutes long. Because of the way I broke down all of the verses and and fused them together yeah. to make one track, but it's it's four songs in one. So I've got other stories too. I talk about. Um, it's almost kind of like how they do the lo-fi stuff on YouTube. Where yeah, like, yeah. You can see the beats are separated, but on YouTube, it's like it's just one it's track. One playing. collected. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, like you know how uh, I like that though. That's dope. How like Unsolved Mysteries would have that. I put that in between like, all of the beats too. So. It's almost like um, three hundred bars and running. Game did. Yeah, I kind of wanted to do something like that before. Like I still got a project like that, that on the way. That was a great inspiration. I used to listen to that like it was an album, man. And he yeah, because so he great. sent me an acid jazz beat one time. And it's like thirty minutes, and I was like, I told myself one of these days I'm just gonna rap straight through it. Just say yeah. whatever I want. Don't stop me <laughs> yeah, recording, even if I fuck minutes. up. Just yeah. keep on recording me. Just let me say whatever come to my mind, and it just be a you know like three hundred bars of running or like how you did. You know, like that's dope though, bro. I like that. Yeah. So um. Uh, I got more stories. Uh, Richard Ramirez, I wrote about that one. That, to me, that was the craziest track I did. That was the first one. Um, so you was just going through the eighties, looking at all of this. Yeah, crazy. Man. You just went know. back in time. Yeah, I said, you know yeah, what? Time yeah. travel. But that's more as good as documentation, and it's entertaining documentation. It's not like some like I'm gonna write a memoir book on these motherfuckers. Like nah, bro, you put no, that I'm, shit in the song. That way, like people could bob their heads. I to was it. writing from their perspectives, you know, and. Yeah. Um, you channeled them. Uh, yeah, I kind of like channeled them, you know, yeah. and it was, it, was, it was a real experience for those that listened to it. They was like, I can't believe you like actually could write about that. That's crazy, bro. You need to perform. And I was like, man, I don't know how this will go off over a crowd. I was, I was going to wait till Halloween to do it because it has that kind of eerie, yeah. Yeah, nah, fucked up vibe. But <laughs> ho- I think Halloween would take the, the, tens- the tension out the room. But if I was just to pop up on any regular day and do that track, people would probably be looking at me like, "Whoa, man! Like, where?" Yeah, it'd throw them off and have more shock value. Yeah, yeah. If they wasn't if they wasn't hip hop heads, they might. If they yeah, if they're not hip hop, it got to be a hip hop crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you familiar with um like uh, a dance with the devil by Mortal Technique, nah, it's kind of so. similar to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's similar to that. I'm, I'm not gonna say I bet him because that was that was years ago, and he was telling something that he went through, but um. This was a uh, real popular case back in the 80s. People remember it. Oh, yeah, I was a kid then, man. But I had, yeah. Everybody started locking their doors. The, yeah, the night yeah. stalker. Yeah. <laughs> back then, LA, nah, a lot of people left that, their doors. I remember my lock. grandma talking about yeah. that. Like when I was a kid, the like, night things, stalker. He might still be outside. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't too long ago. And I was like 95, Grammy was telling me about that. And I was like, what <laughs> the fuck? Yeah, totally, totally. Now, I did have everyone spook for a while. Yeah. He got away with it for a minute. Yeah. Um, and what, and so what did he ever get arrested? Oh, yeah, yeah, he him? got he oh, got okay. caught. Yeah, he in jail time. They had somebody. I like think he died. Seattle. He died. Oh, he died. Now? He died. He died. Oh, I didn't yeah, know he died. In, he died in jail. Yeah, he got married and shit. Uh, or the twenty. Hey, let me tell you, when them guys like pull that type of crazy stuff, man, they end up making millions from the jail. No, nah, they do because his it's, signature. It's crazy. People would think that they suffering in jail, no, but they're not. Like not. they get a whole fan base. Yeah, it's people out there that women wanna, that want to marry him. Yeah, it's nutty. It's nutty, man. It's it's totally the opposite of what you would think. You would think the whole world hates them. Nah. No. It's someone out there that Only still a loves them. Segment of the world hates yeah. them. Yeah. Another and maybe segment. Maybe you agree. Uh, well, another segment is in love with you. Yeah. And it's always like that. That's why I No, nah, yeah. They, where people be like, oh, ain't nobody you support have fan me. Fan mail and shit. All like, I'm getting all the hate yeah. while people I'm sending like, you money. If yeah. if he becomes Paying a, for his case and his lawyer fees and yeah. shit. Man. Hey, and if he becomes a uh let's say he becomes an artist in jail, like makes sculptures or yeah, now that's valuable. Yeah. He dies. That's that skyrockets. Yeah. The only thing you can't profit from is like if you write a book about it. They won't yeah. let you directly profit from your crime. You can write the book, but then all the proceeds will go like to the families or the victims or something like that. Not saying it shouldn't, but it's just it's crazy the world we live in that 
you could do something so negative and it turned into a yeah. positive. Nah, totally. That's just how yeah, energy man. worked. Though, I feel like because there really ain't everything is based off like your perspective. So oh. it really like in the grand scheme of things, there's no. It's still. It's not ultimate. Since negative. we're more conscious, it appears that there's good and evil. But the lion doesn't see it as evil when he got to eat the gazelle. Nah, it's just I'm eat. being a lion. I gotta eat. You gotta eat, nigga. And the gazelle, same thing. The gazelle not looking at even the, the plants is alive. The gazelle not like I'm. I'm killing the plants. I'm killing the fruit. But I gotta eat. You gotta eat. You know, like so. It's just energy. Energy transfer. Plus man. we as plus we as you can't uh, really humans have different laws than just yeah. like the normal laws of nature. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got extras on top of exactly. It. And so, that's what makes us conscious, because we need extras. We're yeah, extra. Yeah, totally. So you got to have extra rules for an extra type of being. Don't eat people. Okay. <laughs> that's a no-no. Yeah, it's a no-no. <laughs> Don't eat people. Nope. No people things. No, yeah, Just no chicken things. No, no biting. <laughs> no. Nope. How about heavy petting? Is that all right? <laughs> oh, nah. God. Like, dog, don't be out here touching people. You're going to get shot. Yeah. <laughs> and that is crazy you brought that up right now, because animals probably get touched more than people. Like, animals get petted and all that shit communicated with more than somebody gets a hug. But nice. you know what's good, though, because... Or even a dap or a handshake. But you know what animals Dogs do? and cats get in touch way more than us. Unless they house pets, truly, they go out in the sunlight, get electrons, and then bring it back into your house. Yeah. So when you, if you have a pet oh my it, God. And, and you're secure, mm-hmm. then you should let it go outside. Yeah, you give it like naturally if you're in an apartment or something, maybe you can't do that. But if let's say you're in a house or you're in a type of place that has some type of opening, you should let your pet go outside, collect yeah. some electrons, and bring it back into the house. I saw an article on it, so no, it, it might be something people want to try. Yeah, so then, yeah, that makes sense. It's almost like grounding yeah. for them. No, totally. They're bringing the in the new electrons back into you. Yeah, indoors because you know you might be stuck indoors for whatever reason. I mean, I grounded yesterday when I went out to the park to um. Work out, and I was just like, man, why haven't I been taking off my shoes? And after I'm done my workout, just stand in the grass for me to walk around the grass and just yeah, you gotta soak t- up some sun. Tap like, in with the with the planet. feet, sun gate. grounded on the. Totally. And I felt better after that. I swear to God, like it felt. I got like I'm so aware. I can feel the difference in like my energy and like my like my mood, and I just felt like totally like lighter. Like my energy felt different. Do Wim Hof breathing while grounding for 30 minutes. Ground for 30 minutes and do maybe about five, six rounds of Wim Hof breathing. Yeah. And, t- and get b- get back at me. Tell okay. me how you feel after that. No, I feel you. Because not only are you pulling the excess protons off your body through grounding, mm-hmm. but with the excess oxygen, you're cleaning your blood. Yeah. So at the that same time, you're pulling some, some negative energy, excess negative energy out. The earth's charging you, and then you're breathing in this excess oxygen to oxidize the body. Yeah. You know, so yeah, do do that and get at me. Let me nah, know. I'm try it out. Yeah, I do that daily. I created a grounding mat so that I could do it indoors. That way, if it's raining or it's too cold to go out, I can be like, "Oh, that's smart." Yeah, you get what I'm that's saying. That's smart. <laughs> I, so I made a grounding mat so I can just put my feet on the grounding mat Hell and do yeah. the same breathing whether I'm indoors or outdoors. I still yeah. prefer outside though. Yeah, nothing you beats know. like natural. <laughs> I'm an Ebonoid person. I need, the sun is necessary. Nah, it that is. vitamin it D really is man. It you, charges you up like Superman. No, nah, totally, like, <laughs> totally. <laughs> and it's simple modalities like that that can can make everything better for you. Yeah, you no, know nah, it totally is. We be thinking like it be something um like crucial we gotta enter in our life. Nah, it's just staying consistent with like a new discipline, like whether it be like exercising, walking, running, whatever it is. And meditation. all of this helps your moods. I notice yeah. when I charge like this, I'm less hungry. Mm-hmm. And I also seem to have cravings less. Yeah, like you know, those, though I though I blow. I might discover all of a sudden I'm like, nah, I'll do that later. Oh God. Whereas before I might have reached for that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so next thing you know, I'm like, nah, that don't even feel necessary. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's Not giving totally. me a lot more, I could say, control over myself. I'm finding less energy in a lot of food lately. Like, especially like, you know, like meat and stuff. Like I rarely eat meat now. I probably eat meat maybe like once a month, but like even just like other food, like just fruits and veggies, like well, the like looking for food that's ele- electric. Yeah. When you feel heavy and dense, when you, then you're always going to look for like meat, bread, cheese, because that's your vibration. Hell yeah. But as your vibration becomes like more expansive, and you, you really feeling the love that's actually love is always present. Yeah. So people think they got to be get, aware of it. No, you just got to be aware of it, man. Mm-hmm. The fact that the sun is here every day tells you you love. 
Nah, you not. ain't worried about that <laughs> shit. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For real, you get up every day, but I don't even, right. you don't even think about it. Yeah. So it's now, love always here. I forgot I told somebody that I was like, man, I was like, you got to start. We should, That should be like a new consensus of like truth, of like, or like not truth, of knowing. Feel me? Like, we need to put that like, think about, sit there and think about what you really know. Not what you've been told or what you think about. Mm-hmm. What do you really know? What are you seeing that's going on out here that you know? You know the sun going to rise up every single day and it's going to fall every single day. That moon going to rise up and fall every single night. Feel me? So, with that being said, you know that. So, how many things can you put in that category that's like refutable out of the doctor? That's that dependable. That's that dependable. Because that's what you really know. The things that you can put in that box underneath that, that shit that you really know in life. Like, feel me? Everything else is... Subjective. Well, it will change your relationship. A lot of shit out here is subjective. And it ain't objective, like feel me? Yeah. The knowing, like the real knowing, that's objective. Like it's right there, nigga. It's solid. Yeah, it's solid. <laughs> it's the truth. Yeah. It can't be lifted. Yeah. Like, no, it can't yeah. be lifted. It's, it's the truth. It's called the truth for a reason. You know? totally. Yeah. Totally. It's not objective. I mean it, it's not subjective. Yeah, it's not it's not subjective. Feel me? You know. So no, nah, no, nah, I'm with you on that. I'm like, no, nah, that's a good that's a good point. I'm glad you brought that up. You know, I read once in a book, it said that the that no human being could be true because we did too many things. Nah, I agree with it that. It says, so the things we were looking for in other people, it was ridiculous to look for because in order to be true, you had to be like the sun. The sun just lights the world. It does one thing. Yeah. And that's why it was the truth. Yeah. So anything that does multiple things, it's always going to be found to be a lie somewhere. Yeah. It's Not because it's evil or, or, or bad. It's just indirect. Like, yeah. It does too many things. Yeah, it does too so many there's, things. So there's, 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 within that too many things, there's room for error. Yeah. And some people look at error as a lie. Yeah. You understand totally. what I'm saying? That's real. You know, so, and I was, that always stuck with me. I was like, wow, that's kind of deep. But the sun does just do one thing, light the world. Yeah. And that's it. That's it. That's it. They just spread the sunshine on everybody. They don't pick and choose. Like, I'm not going to spread sunshine on the rapist or the... Or the child molester, or the murderer, or the evil politician, or whatever the fuck. Yeah, whatever the, we like. The tyrannous. Yeah, whatever we be labeling things like people that we be feeling like they don't deserve to be breathing no more and living. It's like the sun, not differentiation, nothing. Like it's loving, it's unconditional nope. love, like God. Love. Everybody getting it. Everybody getting it. Everybody getting it. it. <laughs> feel me? Everybody get it. It's you that can only take it away. Feel me? It's deep that you said that because that's what the uh, the book went on to say. It went on to say also that the sun was a, a representative of unconditional love because it did shine on everything and everyone. Yeah. It ain't picking it too. Yeah, it wasn't picking it too. <laughs> it was like, you need some and you need some and you get some. And, and that's how it. I know if God designed this place, then God's unconditional love. Totally. Because why would he set up a mechanism, a ball of plasma, light-giving, life-giving plasma if it ain't, you know, yeah, no, totally. It would be set up that way. We would literally be seeing people wake up in the morning and be like, oh, damn, that nigga must have been up to no good because he just evaporated. Yeah, or he's all gray. Look yeah. at that. Right, or he's like, like how they the the disintegrated the that when nigga. The yeah, sun or, chose not to keep this nigga in the simulation yeah, no more. Yeah, turn to salt or something like that. <laughs> totally. Know, yeah, any yeah, of, any yeah, of that shit. Case. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Now, hey, it's crazy you brought that up, Arif, because I had this theory on what if, like, those accounts where they was talking about shit like that what if it was like God growing and developing with loving itself? Uh, expound. I don't. I'm, I, I yeah, don't where, like, where was I'm you saying going? like, because <laughs> all this thing is really about what's going on right now, is about God loving itself and finding more about itself out about itself through you and me, Michael, everybody on the yeah, planet, totally. even reptilians, aliens, greys, whatever, whatever the fuck. exists, God unicorns, made it. leprechauns, yeah, nigga, whatever the fuck you could think of, God made it. God made it. It yeah. comes from God's imagination and God's fantasies. So, with that being said, what if those accounts where they talking about like you know, God taking vengeance and whatever, like what if those accounts were slightly true, like with the pillars of salt, like I don't want no sodomy and Gomorrah and all that shit. So he you know, sent some archangels down there to get rid of that shit because it's not how he pictured it being really at first. But then maybe God started growing more like, hold up, I'm I'm discounting myself. That's me. I'm destroying <laughs> me. Yeah. Like, so I'm saying, I ain't saying it's Let true. Let it run longer. I ain't saying it's true. I'm just saying, like, this is just a theory of mine I had on mushrooms one day. I was, like, thinking, like, man, what if, like, the accounts in the Bible, because I know for a fact that we all just God in different forms. And all this shit is a, a love story about God loving on itself and finding more out about itself through everyone and everything. 
Well, mm-hmm. the book "The Mushroom and the Sacred Cross" by I think a guy's name is John Allegro. Yeah. That's what he he. I haven't read the book, but I've you know looked at some YouTube videos mm-hmm. and kind of read some summaries on it. That's what he talks about is that the Bible has to do with these sex mushroom cults, mm. and that until you but he because he breaks down all these old translations and basically mushrooms are all throughout the Bible. Yeah, now they are. They removed it though. So, but they removed it. The 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 whole fruit in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, that's a, a mushroom. mushroom. That's a mushroom. That's, that's the only thing that's leveling up yeah. your conscience not here, y'all. Yeah. Promise you. That's so, brain food. So. I mean, yeah, that, that that would make sense based on like something that could is eaten. The forbidden fruit. I mean, it was probably I mean, that's a, what a lot of shots. It was probably fall, a lot of wild mushrooms. shrooms back in that day, like you know, it's not well, you've been given everything, but you've been told not to eat of this one well, thing. If it was like that far back, we talking about like long before ten thousand further. And than also 10, consider that the area that they say all of this mushrooms were bigger and, and taller. Yeah. Oh, definitely. A definitely. lot of stuff, a lot of plants and trees was much bigger and taller. Yeah, you could have just it's took- based off our oxygen content yeah. that we have now. Is that why shit looked the way it is? But the oxygen was much more enriched back. You know, hundred thousand years ago, it was more. It was so more if you hydrogen, find a mushroom, too. the mushroom might eat you. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've so showed like pictures. Like, the, uh, like Venus, imagine the Venus flytrap. Yeah, I'm pretty sure them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure them fucking um them fucking plants was big as fuck back then. But that enriched well, soil, well, that's probably a was picture real. Of a that's why they call it mushroom. man eating. Yeah, it's just not man eating no more because it's so little. Yeah. Yeah. But back yeah, then, I'm pretty sure they did in them Greek, Egyptian times, nigga, it. don't walk past that shit. They'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> don't touch that one. But you know what it also could be? It could be uh, degeneration. Over time, yep. everything degenerates. Yeah. yeah you know, so and then over, it evolves. Then it regenerates. Then it, then it falls, crumbles, and then comes back up again. Yeah. So I've seen pictures of uh, a petrified mushroom tree. And yeah. The guy was showing it was a tree. It yeah, was a I mushroom. It looked like a regular mushroom. Yeah, but it was But big. it was taller than the man. Yeah. And he's like, when you oh, look damn. at this, he said, it looks like it's like um, like stone. Yeah. He said, but this is, they took samples of yeah, it. You he's can like, tell from the cap, though. Yeah. You can it, see like the little, what's that, the, the umbrella thing underneath the cap? Talking about the- uh, The skirt. The the veil. The veil, that's what it's called. Where, where the veil is. Yeah, yeah like you I seen I seen that video that you're talking about yeah, when you I seen it. Yeah, and you can see the veil before he even got to explain. It, I was like, nigga, that's a giant mushroom. Because yeah, I can yeah. see the veil on it. And then he was like, Well, yeah, when we took the samples, we discovered I was like, nigga, I wouldn't have even had to take no samples, nigga. I know mushroom when I see it. Well, we do a lot of mushrooms. Yeah. So so, <laughs> so we kind of went up on it. You could have told them about that. Yeah, yeah, like, possibly. Not possibly. totally. <laughs> but I was just so surprised that it was taller than the guy. It was like a literal tree. No, it was like it was hovering over him like yeah. an umbrella, like it was like oh. a literal tree. Like I I remember seeing that shit. He was like leaning on it and shit. It was tight. That's yeah, wow. So. Well, there's a lot of history here that we still don't know about. Yeah. Because as you mentioned earlier, we do a lot of just accepting and yeah. believing that's knowing as opposed to us saying, let me, can I get this information? Yeah. What kind of journey? Or am I, I seeing that out here right now? Like, am I really seeing that? Or is that just someone telling me that's what I'm seeing? Yeah, completely. Like, you feel me? But that's how I just add a shop. Like, well, nah, that's how I changed my perspective on karma. Like, because what I was seeing out here, I'm like, people is, are, you already resonating at a low frequency. That's why low shit happening in your life. Because you are, you can't admit to yourself where you have to take accountability for and changing your life. Once you start changing that shit in your life, your life will change. No, nah, totally. You have to pick yourself up, but as long as you stay rolling around in the dirt with the pigs, that's who you're going to be kicking it with. There ain't no karma, nigga, you're laying and swimming and shit. So it's impossible not to get dookie in your close mouth. Close your eyes or you'll get it in. Yeah, close your eyes or you'll get it in. Man. Totally. Totally. Like, it's impossible to get away from it. But once you change your frequency, you resonate at a higher frequency, you're going to experience a higher things. And I ain't going to say you ain't going to experience challenges. The challenge is going to happen right away. But they'll appear, Either way. But they won't feel as weighty. Yeah, and they won't appear as challenges, really. I, that's just the best word I could use. Feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but they won't, they, everything is seem minute to you because you'll just be like, I can handle that. Yeah, you, you'll be open to it. You'll you'll see the challenges. No different if you uh, on the court playing basketball. The whole reason you came on the court to play is to play defense, play offense, and see what yeah. you can do. Yeah, and, shut down and, the opponent. And, yeah, and challenge yourself. Yeah, totally. You know, no, totally. No, put but once again, in the best position, you know, to win you know, based off whatever the opponent's doing, and, and you take what the opponent gives you and feed off of that, and get up. You know. I like that. Turn that into yeah, yeah. Po- turn no. that into positive energy. Well, you I that's mean. alchemy right yeah. there. Yeah, no, it you're is. You're saying you're gonna transmute totally. Your opponent's bringing a certain energy or a certain thing, and you're gonna transmute it into what you need it to be. I like yeah. Some like, I feel like they just teach a lot of stuff backwards. Like um, 
like you, I heard like someone told me like you can't turn a positive into a negative, and I'm like you can. I've seen it happen before. Like I've seen people have positive situations and like it went sour. That's turning a positive to a negative. Like oh, all the time. You know, it's man. a lot of people that just can't trying to do in good and then end up going bad. Yeah, that happened to me plenty of times. Bro, the studio session, be trying to get homies to record, niggas end up mm-hmm. fighting. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. You'd be like, damn, man. But your intentions was totally <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, like to bring good. people together. I to finally got everybody art. to like some quality niggas together that all g- sound good on the mic, and niggas can get it done, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but nah, that's hey, nah, that's like just... it's like energy can go either way. It's not like a bad or good thing. Like it's nothing's impossible. Energy is energy. Yeah, that's why it goes like when you put the batteries in. It's, it, you have to put the battery in two different ways. That way it can circulate. Yeah. So that the negative circuit, and that so yeah, positive so the, energy so the can circulate. Because be if you just were to put it the same direction, the energy going to go in the same direction. Feel me? But positive and negative, they can go all directions. Like, it's just an energy. Like, what you decide to resonate with. Yeah, we conduct we conduct the energy. Just like, you can use Star Wars as an example. Where do we, we want to funnel it? Like, you said what? I said you could use Star Wars in, as an example, like with the Force. Like how they explain the light side and the dark side of the Force. You know, like it's things that like Anakin Skywalker, he didn't go to the dark side because he wanted to harm people. He went to the dark side for the dark side because he was trying to save his wife from dying. But he didn't know that he was going to be the cause. Yeah. He went too far. He didn't know his own actions was going to be the cause of it. So he got wrapped up too much in the vision of the future instead instead of remaining present in the moment. Yeah. He let, you know, and that's what we always do as human beings. We either wrapped up in the past or in the future. That's real. And we never hear in the present where, you know, life is really a gift. That's why it's called the present. No, 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 no. That's yeah. real. That's real. No, Star so it's Wars like, is a good example. Yeah, like at least with Anakin Skywalker's story, like it's some examples of Sith Lords that just was totally like, I'm, I want to be a piece of shit and that's what I like to do. Yeah. But even if you read some of those stories, they ain't just have a bunch of bad shit happen to them. A lot of shit go their way. So you would say like, oh, you know, you're doing bad shit, bad shit going to happen to you. You know, it's about... That person, that Sith Lord, knows how to fully manipulate that negative energy. And he's confident that anything bad is good to him. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, and it goes back to my terminology. So he's going to absorb quote, it. He's my quote I made up, y'all, is that we our, our own thoughts are our, our own torturers, our own tormentors. Yeah. So, like, a Sith doesn't torment himself about what he did. He's like, I choked him out with the force. He deserved it. I had to do it. <laughs> In fact, he might he a Sith Lord will go home and be like, you know, I need to lift weights more. I wanted to snap his neck quicker. Yeah, no, for sure. <laughs> I gotta, sure. He got to get a little more <laughs> mental weights. Man. You know, I should have killed him quicker. I should have did it faster. You know, mm, I'm a little disappointed. Getting sloppy. Yeah, totally, totally, totally. So, not not his perspective. And then it's it's a certain amount of focus. And confidence. Yeah, confidence. confidence. So, like, the Sith Lord has complete confidence in that his bad is good. Yeah. Like, and that that's just the best way we can explain it, you know? Yeah, like words the, words really in prison. Words don't set free. Yeah, you that's just the saying. best way I can explain I wish I could use a better word to describe that whole sentence, but... Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Right. <laughs> or the Mark Lar. <laughs> totally. Totally, totally. Now, words can't imprison, but I, I mean, I get the gist of it. The gist of it yeah. is that if he thinks bad is good, then it becomes good for him. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, anyone, first of all, anyone, only people coming after him are going to those who think, who, who think bad, who think uh, bad is bad. Yeah. No, it, totally. Anyone who's also doing any type of evil he's doing, like, they're his friend. Yeah. He he doesn't even have to persuade them. No, nah, totally. They probably bring him missions. No, nah, totally. They like. Would you like more baby arm soup? <laughs> <laughs> Y'all told somebody what I was like, man, it's illegal to motherfuckers. See, they was like, "What you mean?" I was like, "Bro, I was like, I was like, what do you think?" I was like, "Bro, murderers no murderers, bro." Yeah, totally. I was like, "Child molesters no child molesters. They're in a group like yeah, they, they stick. You don't together, think they're they, looking for acceptance? They live by each <laughs> other. They like if you had a friend or family member that was into that weird shit, they're not gonna tell you. No, no, you telling the truth. I like, saw a documentary, especially if they already heard you say, like, "I'm gonna lynch anybody that's into that shit." Yeah, I'm gonna fuck him up. They're definitely gonna be like, I'm not gonna mention that one I'm into. I was just gonna see if he's he was not around him. him. <laughs> no, nah, totally. He's. I was just gonna see if he was into. It. Nah. I was gonna invite him for Thursday. Well, no, nah, because they have these rings. They have these <laughs> yeah. pedophile rings where nah, they, they share do. porn and it's sick, and but all it's that. like it's going down. Yeah, like it's like, unimaginable. Yeah, but it's possible. But it's, it is happening. It's happening. Yeah, you know, like it's unimaginable. It's unimaginable because you don't want to imagine. It. It's yeah. so like disgusting and evil. Yeah, but. 
It's on the border of us because we're not into that. Yeah, that, that's why it's like what he just said. It's like <laughs> to someone that, you know, you moving in the righteous path, bad is going to seem bad to you. Yeah, yeah you like, like, you just play this. It's logical. <laughs> you, hey, you might even as a man go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> as we was talking about it, I was oh, doing terrible. that on the inside. I ain't going to lie. It's a kid. Oh. Like, what, how could you do that? Yeah, you're not for real. What possessed your thoughts? Yeah, you know. Like, how did you even land on that thought, my nigga? Like, first you got to think of some shit before you even get to the action. So, nigga, how long did you roll around with that in your head? Yeah. How long did you wrestle right. with that monster, nigga? Yeah, before you decided to actually put it into play on somebody. Yeah. Because that's how I figured out murderers. I was like, a murderer one day wrestled around with the thought in their head enough, like, Murdering ain't that bad. Everybody serial else, killer. Serial, yeah, serial, serial killers. My, my serial bad. Killer. My bad. Not to say murder. Serial killers. Because we had this discussion before. That's yeah, why. we had this discussion yeah. before. And continue. So though, let me get specific. Good what he said. A serial killer basically stops tormenting themselves and stops agreeing with the consensus, the collective consciousness that you know, murdering people for fun is wrong. They tell themselves, man, it ain't bad. I just doing what I want to do out here. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm finna slice somebody open because it makes me feel good. Mm-hmm. Plain and simple. Yeah. Like, and they not, feel me, the person that feels bad is because they still thinking about what outside people thoughts is thinking. Or sin and karma. Yeah, sin and karma. They thinking about all these type of things. The the serial killer has none of that, that in his mind. There's no shame. No, there's no guilt. concepts to that. Yeah. No. It's it's like, I want to see what your body work like I on the inside. It. And there's got to be some narcissism in there. No, nah, it totally is. It's you're, a whole lot. It's egotistical. Yeah, it's a whole lot of shit in there. in there. It's a whole lot of mental yeah. corruption and just falsalities and I can do this to you because you don't exist, but I do. Yeah, it's, it's that type of like. That's it's that's entitlement, yeah. maybe. Yeah, it's all, all that shit. It's a bundle of wrapped up bullshit in that, feel me, that that's why motherfuckers lock them type people up because like we can't even unravel that really. Yeah. I just chunk it up to what I just chunked it up right now. That's the best way I can explain why they do what they do. Yeah. Because I watched that move that show that you had put me on to. Um, uh, I know you're talking about Netflix. I know what you're talking about. Mind Hunter. Mind Hunters. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Y'all gotta watch that, man. It's about it? a dude in the seventies. It's on Netflix. 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 Yeah, it's Mind a, Hunters. Good, it's man. about a dude named what's his name? I don't remember his name, but basically he's the guy who created serial killer profiling. Yeah. For the FBI. He like mastered it because at a certain point they didn't even realize these type of killings were going on. And once they did, they didn't know how to solve them. Cause the guys who do this are normally like genius level IQ. Mm-hmm. So they they as he as he said earlier, um, they already probably for several years been kind of coming close to it, killing animals and doing other yeah. stuff. And then one day they just decide, you know what? This is what I know is going to bring me happiness. Yeah, Fuck I'm going to try it out tonight. I'm not feeling bad about what I want to try out. But that could have been three, four years of planning before he ever did that. Yeah, and it's like it's not as on a high level or whatever. But you can compare that to people that be um trying to come out about being in the closet about gay people. Yeah, feel me? The person that's fully confident doesn't care about you know what other people think. Like they out there living their life, making videos about it. Whatever. Yeah, this is who I am. But the like, person that's scared, like they trying to, they still worried about what my mama gonna think. What is the neighbor yeah, gonna they, say? They got an image. What's the, the judges gonna say? What's the, the church job. gonna say? Feel me? Yeah, totally. Like the serial killer, the people that's like, like it's the confidence. So it's being the complete look, playing, confidence in whatever you are well, thinking. Playing devil's advocate, could we say possibly serial killers might have a certain freedom? Oh, absolutely. They do. They do. Because they treat the simulation like it's a real simulation yeah do what you want like they treat that shit like grand theft auto yeah totally like you're just an npc on the street <laughs> slice your throat yeah you didn't matter you know but you got a whole family that care about yeah, you yeah, totally. you, got, you got kids to get back to, to frank to. yeah he like just never came home because i'm wearing him as a hat yeah like. <laughs> i'm wearing frank as a hat this is my Socks. frank hat this is my frank yeah, hat got his eyeballs on his yeah, side and shit. <laughs> whenever i'm having problems thinking i put on my frank hat <laughs> and frank helps me nah. contemplate it <laughs> frank hey man it's a mad place down here man yeah, you, you, know, you better start enjoying it as it is and not how you wish it i was. see why they made so many batman movies called insane asylum like it was a message there, like try to tell you, like nigga, this world is an insane asylum. Yeah, totally. It's not just the actual building that Batman's going into; it's the whole Gotham City is an insane asylum. So you can compare that to real life, nigga. All of L.A., all of Chicago, all of wherever you at, nigga. Well, all of is France, New York. Yeah, Gotham is anywhere. Yeah, well, Gotham is really New yeah, York. York. I take it what a Rick said. It's it's anywhere really. You can compare it to anywhere. Like it's, Gotham is Paris to me. Like nigga, it's, it's downtown L.A. Shit going on right now. Everywhere, you know? anywhere where darkness is. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. <laughs> But the biggest comparison for us is, yes, New York. I agree yeah. with you on that. Like, as soon as you see it, 
you think New York if you're an American. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Feel me? But who knows? Somebody in Europe might see Britain or London when they see Gotham, like when they're watching a the Batman movie or something. I could definitely see somebody seeing it's, London. It's, yeah, especially because like Batman Jack white. Ripper, like, like, if you could, white, could you, you watching Batman. Batman. Song? Could you write a Batman song? Probably, yeah. Okay. I could probably do that. I, I used to watch Batman it. when I was... Because you see, it was uh, it was age restricted back then. They had the remember that the Y seven yeah, little thing. Yeah, so yeah. we was in kindergarten. Yeah. We would get you know special privilege because we was uh, in the dance classes and stuff. So we'll go watch it after class and, and and soak up all the episodes of Batman. You a dancer? No, nah, no, nah, not like that. Um, that was I did. I took like ballet and stuff like that in, in kindergarten. I got you. And uh, yeah, dance recitals. Yeah, I played Super Mario and Aladdin and shit like that. Nice, nice. Nah, but no, see, I like hearing all this information because I believe this is what builds an artist. Yeah, not I totally. Do it goes completely into your craft, yeah. man. All of it goes. The into video your craft. games, like the Mario. Like I know you didn't incorporate Mario in your runs before. Yeah, I, uh, one of the that's crazy you mentioned that one of the first tracks I actually recorded on that got put out. Um, shout out to my man name uh, Nameless. Uh, it was uh, called Super Super Mario World or something like that. Where he was, it was like Super Mario, but we was talking about being in the hood. Yeah, yeah Barrio. Yeah. Like yeah, the Barrio. <laughs> yeah, 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 so yeah the like, Barrio. You know, like that Super Barrio. Super Barrio. And that's t-shirt um, worthy. Hell yeah. Hey, get at me. You know I, I'm graphic design. I, we can. Hey, know, I mean, yeah, it's, make it's, that into yeah. a t-shirt for you. Yeah, totally. I mean, yeah, I'll have to holler at Nameless about it. He got all the the Nameless. Get at stuff. me. Yeah, yeah, man. He's a serious dude. He put that together. Make some money. He's got billboards around the city. Um, yeah, talented brother, man. Yeah, that reminds me of the um, shout out to the homie Chuck B, man. Um, his song Super Negro. Y'all can check it out on all streaming platforms. It's Super Negro. Song. Okay. Yeah. Feel me? It's okay. like it's called Super Negro. Another T-shirt where I'm a song. superhero, bitch. I'm a super Negro. So that should be packaged together. <laughs> yeah, the song with hard. the T-shirt, the hat. Yeah, like oh, but sometimes like we don't be seeing like the whole vision of it, or like I we feel- might see it. But like, don't know how to necessarily like complete it because like that focus not there. I'm telling you, yeah, Jedi, you gotta like. It's something about like the, the focus that I'm at now. Like I wish sometimes I would have had it at 25, but I'm happy I got it now because everything I went through it like in my dubs, I was supposed to go through to get here. Yeah, to have some real experience. Yeah, because if you too like, you don't want to be the parent in your 20s around your friends and. You know, I can't, nah, nah, I nah. couldn't imagine. Like that's why I say I don't. You'll miss it. Yeah, that's why I don't wish it too much. Like I don't regret it because then I would have been too wise for that time. I yeah. wouldn't have been able to have fun. So it's like, but I love it now because I'm still. And, and that fun is collecting no data. You're collecting data when you're out there having fun. Totally. Think about when you're a little kid and you want to learn something. Mm-hmm. The whole reason you learn it fast is because you don't have any inhibitions to learning the moves on the joystick. Yep. You don't care about how long it takes to learn how to... to uh, yeah, you're going to sit your eyes on it yeah. and figure that out. Totally. Because you're trying to beat that the actual, game. Look, the mean? work is the enjoyment Yeah, when you're a kid. Learning how to do the combos and shit. Yeah, the work is the enjoyment. Yeah. when you, As you get older, you get more, I think, solidified into wanting to get to the end result. I Totally. No, it is that. You because want, you, you believe, the, you you believe the, time is limited. And they and they never show you the steps. Like when with anything successful, they never tell you the steps of how to get there. They're gonna sell it to you. Yeah. They tell you what to do, but not how to do, do it. Because they want to sell. They're it gonna to sell you. it to you. If they tell you how to do it, then you can make it too. I love infomercials. I follow infomercials all yeah. the time. Like like some people, you know, follow things. I just, I look at their infomercials because I like how they lead you towards stuff. You get what I'm saying? So they'll lead you towards everything. They'll give you just enough on the edge, and then it comes down to nine ninety nine, okay. just for nine ninety nine. Bottom line, nine, you can nine, finally nine, have nine. what you've been waiting for. <laughs> nine ninety nine. Not that I done sold you this dream. I need yeah. that. Dollar they don't built it up, polished it, shine it. Ting. Nine ninety nine knows what's gonna make it happen, and you click on it, and man, it's about a hundred dollars in upsells. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it all. Like before, it used to feel like, oh, see, man, nah, they, 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 they're they're looking at the psychological nature of someone in a heightened emotional experience who's ready to buy. Yeah. Yep. And and if you read any books on that, uh, they'll show you that once the person's in that heightened moment, ready to yeah. buy, that's when you should pack it all in. Hey, man, would you yeah. like this too? Would you like this too? Yeah. Would you like this too? That's what I used to do they in telemarketing. They ain't really going to turn nothing down. Are oh, you telemarketed before? Yeah, I did that for about four or five years. Oh, so you sold things over the phone. 
I did yeah. that, man. I was in the top 10, man. Yeah. I made mean, a lot of money for that motherfucker. You working any boiler rooms? Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. That's where the real telemarketing nah, yeah, I did. I did telemarketing. It was for home remember, improvement. Remember, you so like, you hey, took hey, me too shady to go do that yeah, one time. The, the, the boiler room would be closed in 30 days, but everybody made 30 grand. Yeah. <laughs> for real. I'll tell you oh. About that. Yeah, for real. It'll be closed nah, 30 nah, days. They'll have a new address. Hell yeah. Nah, see, yeah, nah, this dude, he had been like, he figured out the paperwork. So his joint was legit. But um, he would just get. I got the I got the police called on the building one time. Was, it's a boiler room. I was, fuck, I was <laughs> yeah. fucking with this one call, this dude in Riverside. Like he was just telling me no, so, but he kept talking, so I was just going back and forth with him. And I hung up and didn't think nothing of it. Yeah. And they called me up to the office. They're like, "Man, what is this bullshit?" And they played me the call back. They're like this guy called the police on me. Da, 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 da. Like, do not do this. Da, da, da. I'm going to send you out. He wasn't going to send me out because I was making too much, bro. He was just basically like, nigga, chill. Like, yeah. You know. Well, you get people like that sometimes on the phone. They're lonely. They want to talk mm-hmm. to you. And sometimes you do have to just press the off button, you know, especially yeah. if you're selling things over the phone. And oh, he's not lying. Cut you the know. call short. Yeah. But he might have emotionally got attached. Yeah. yeah I told him I was going to uh, hold him down and cut his hair. <laughs> uh, I got mad at yeah. that. He was an old white dude. Yeah, yeah, real yeah. man. He was like, hold me down. They, he don't, the white people don't like being held down with nothing. Don't tell them to be held down. No. <laughs> well, they already feel privileged. They don't, yeah. They, so, you know, if you already. Don't feel, restrain me. Well, if you feel powerful and yeah. privileged. <laughs> he not, lost. Get out of my good sir. Yeah. Get out of my way. Well, you got into his imagination. I can't even imagine that happening. <laughs> the fact that he said, I wish he would put yeah, your he, hands on me. I don't even think he was tripping on the haircut. Part. He was like, you're not holding me down anywhere. <laughs> he said, I rebuke that. I rebuke it. You know what I'm saying? Man, I was trying to find this little clip on Instagram where, like, man, Rick Ross gave somebody some, like, he basically gave, like, the quickest game ever in, like, 15 seconds. It was, like, so dope. But I feel like if you sleep, you wouldn't even catch it. Like, it'll just sound like that nigga just say something simple. Send it to me. Feel me? I like Rick Ross. So <laughs> nah, I wish I could have played it and fine, but I don't want to spend too much time trying nah, to look nah, for that nah, shit. Nah, you know. But that was basically the gist of it, though. Like, it was real simple. He was just basically telling people, like, man, get involved, get passionate about your craft, whatever you doing, stay consistent with it and focus on that. Totally. Put out all that other shit out your head. And, like, to some people, it might sound like, feel me, like, something so simple, but, like, it's a jewel because it's really hard to do that. Like, it's a difficult thing, especially when you're coming out of, like, the habits of being a consumer and just spending your money all the time. Trying it's hard. to make yourself happy. Yeah, it's, it's hard to shift yourself. And then you have so many friends and family members as consumers and always ready to spend money on a barbecue or get together and go to the movies and do this and that. Ain't nobody really, like, I think about how many times you go into a room, whether in your family, family and friends, people that you know, not strangers, family and friends. You go into a room and people are conversating about starting a business <clears throat> or that they just put some money into something or, you know, how many people are having them conversations or, or we, about to, we about to buy some land. Nah, very few. Feel me? I'm talking about the viewers at home. Yeah. Think about this, like in yeah, your own real, life. Man. Feel yeah. me? When you step into a room with your friends and family, how many people are talking about like starting a family business? Yeah, what are your conversations? And it, yeah, what are the ranges of your conversations? And if that's not in the range of your conversation, like you really might have family. to be the difference in yeah. that. Like you might want to be the difference if you're already thinking like that. Be that difference in the family. Yeah, you get it started. Don't you get say, it started. Well, if the and rest don't wait of on everybody them. else come together, yeah, no. don't wait on that. Nah, no, man. no, 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 no. no. <laughs> so but I've learned you. family, friends, and strangers. A lot of times, people got to see you build it up first, and then they get inspired. Once they see you already got something rolling. It's like, it's hard to convince people. That's why they, what they so-called made up, I don't believe it's true. I have to believe they use frequency to move the pyramids, but they was like saying they whipping motherfuckers and shit. Hell yeah. Oh, that's some bullshit. Yeah, I think this is nah, bullshit. Stone, but nah, if, if stone, you didn't, nah, nah, hold you didn't the have stones, the technology. Look, the stones, I looked at a thing last night where they were putting a stone on a, on a truck, right? Yeah. And the truck was popping a willy. Yeah. So what people can move that? Yeah. If you look at the old school tools of them rolling nah, they use stone on some stick, they use frequency. Yeah, you know. That. But like it always like my whole point though of me saying that is that like when it comes to when it comes to force, it's force. Like and, and like feel me like you have to when starting a family business, you can't force people. You can't whip your brother on the back. Hey, nigga, go turn those taxes in. <laughs> yeah, totally. Nigga, file that shit. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be cover employees yeah, short like that yeah, no for sure you can't <laughs> yeah, show mama out. Be like mama, you asking for too much money this month or whatever. You know just. Nah. 
No, like, people have to want to participate. And yeah. You, and you might literally, as you said, have to build it up. Yeah. And that's going to inspire them to be like, man, what, what can be my position in it? Because now they see that you a boss. It might inspire everybody, though. Yeah. It might be, Don't look for it to do it, that. It might only be, you might have thought, man, a whole family uh, can see the power in this and we could have generational wealth and yeah. we could franchise this out and nephew could do this and auntie could do that. And you might discover, man, it might be one or two people. Yeah, who actually that's out, really of, on out board. of 30, 40 family members, one or two people might be like, dang, cause oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for doing this because this is what I, I wanted to do, yeah. something like this. I'm making more money. I'm, I'm not, not working, I'm not I'm working my own time. And, yeah, I've got my own time. You know what I'm saying? And that's what we all really want. Like people, like especially in this day and age, people more than ever, I feel like, want to travel and see the world. Mm-hmm. And the restrictions on that is the money. Yes. Like the money is in, feel me, in high abundance of printing printing but it's in low abundance <laughs> of being in people's pockets well value money follows value not totally so oh that's what rick ross said uh-huh. you just said it right now yeah. at the end of everything he said focus and he was like once you feel me get to working on your shit you build your value and once you build your value you get the money the money follows value. yeah that's what he said that was the whole end of the video you it came full circle okay feel me not totally i like how yeah. you brought that in because yeah. we know money follows value value don't follow money no. don't nothing like people that's ignorant, consumers follow money and chase after money. Well, money's not real, and therefore it's infinite. Yeah, we made it's it up with our minds. We make concept. it up with our agreement that it's valuable. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, so that means uh, it has to follow value. Uh, it's energy. <laughs> no, it's energy totally. Yeah, it's money. energy. Currency. Money. Currency. Current. The real money is time. That's why they taking your time from your job, so you can come work for them, and then they pay you. They, yeah. You're trading your time for some money. And depending on what you feel your They getting the real thing. Yeah. They feel me? Because wherever you working at that company, they're saving their time. That boss is saving his time on having to do the task that you're doing. Yeah. Because one person could run. never do what 100 people could do. Ever. Which is how you neg entropy a company. Yeah. You might start off the company as just you. Mm-hmm. And then a year later, you got 10 people working under you. Yep. So that's neg entropy. Yeah, you got to expand it because you, you can't do every it. task. No, nah, totally. Right. You know. I could edit everything and do all this stuff, but I wouldn't want to edit this podcast too. Well, like, do that's you too even much like, work. Do, do you even I like don't. Doing it? Yeah. So I'd rather pay someone that actually likes to do filming and editing stuff. It makes more sense. And, and like and the outsource stuff. Yeah. Feel me? Like I, I, I feel people when they in the beginning, you don't have the resources or the income to pay for it. But if you do um relieve your stress and pay someone outsource that that skill and have someone else do that. Plus like, you might find there's a guy who's an editor and maybe he's decent but mm-hmm. right now while you're growing decent's good enough exactly so then he might do it for i don't know 25 bucks an hour or something like that yeah and then he might end up developing and coming back you know years later and, and really taking it off with you like totally but he got his he got paid to learn i did this i had a handyman company at one time right yeah and i needed extra money i was doing construction during the week and on the weekends i was like man i need extra two three hundred bucks so yeah. i have to dip in my regular money and so I just opened up a handyman company, start doing it on the weekends, and a gang of that shit I didn't know how to do. Oh God! I went and got a Home Depot one two three book, and just was like, I'm only gonna do the easy shit, like hang a ceiling fan. Yeah, you know, I like, <laughs> you know, that's how, it yeah. makes sense. I did. So I said, I'm gonna do easy stuff, so people would call me, Oh, you do that? No, I don't put no tubs in. But yeah. now I do. Oh God! <laughs> Out the same yeah, you got there. Yeah, you yeah, got, got there eventually. I yeah. got there. The first year, no, I just did ceiling fans, maybe hang a cabinet, yeah, do a little drop sink or something like that. But two years in, man, I was like, oh yeah, I can do that. I can, I can hang some bars on your like, window. Yeah, that's no problem. I can do all of that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's uh, be open to be open to the adventure of what they call mistakes. I prefer the word experience. Yeah, lessons. I like lessons. lessons. Because you know mistakes teach you more, man. Like, I, Will Smith said that. And, like, I don't know why. When he said it, it stuck in my head more. But when I heard him say it on Instagram on the clip, he was like, mistakes are really lessons. Like, every time you fail, you learn something on what not to do. Totally. Feel me? Like, now I know not to do that. And he was like, when, when you succeed and you win, you just feel good. It's just pleasure. It's feel just like sex or something else or doing some dope, some smoking some weed yeah, when, or whatever. Winning like, is addictive. Yeah, it just feels uh, like nah, pleasure. That's just, real. Pleasure is that just, your own quote? No, nah, I've I've heard that before. Winning is addictive. Not winning man. is addictive. No, nah, it is. Pleasure makes you. That's think why more successful coming. people like can't mess with people that's unsuccessful because they like oh, now nah, you might throw off my energy, nigga. Yeah, they. I'm are, on a successful yeah, drive. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, and it's real like that. It's like I'm already resonating with success, nigga. You're resonating with failure. You are gonna fuck up my energy. You are gonna offset my shit. I, yeah, I got my thing when I like if I go to the casino or something. I 
I, I wear sunglasses and I and I get a show oh, I like that. rum or something. I don't look nobody. What's your, what's your game that you play that you gamble? Roulette. That's all I do. Ah, <laughs> we might have something to show you. Might have something to show you, baby. Man. Might have something, oh, to, might have something to share, <laughs> share with you to show add to your catalog. Is he worthy? Okay. Is he worthy? I, I think, think he's worthy. He's okay. got a reef. I he's think worthy. he's worthy. I he's think a, he's worthy. He's worthy. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I've developed a little strategy. I always come out on top with something. Yeah. Whatever, homie be blowing this shit. I be like, man, I told y'all, man. Hey, he found a, a what, what would they call a, 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 a fail safety, a, 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 a flawless thing, man. Well, no, yeah. we, win, we win every time. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking and, about. And you, you can win, win every time as long as you know when to pull out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah totally. Pause. Yeah, pause. As long as you nah, know nah. when to you know, not get greedy, yeah. you're going to win every time. Like with our method. Yeah, every time. Every time. Like every it's time. a guarantee, 100% guarantee. Man. Ain't that many of those in life. It's, it sounds like, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like something I could add to my arsenal, man. Yeah, yeah. Our yeah. brothers are some intelligent bros. Yeah, yeah, nah, no, nah, nah, I mean, we'll share it with you. We'll share it with Hell you. Yeah. Nah, that, nah, definitely. Nah, it's, it's it's out there. It's a lot of fun down here once you change your relationship to the matrix. Totally. Regardless of what's in your pocket. Yeah, regardless. There's a lot of it's a lot of fun build your down value here. up and the money will yeah. come. Well, plus power has to be internal. Yeah. And most people's power is external, which means they believe someone's gonna put them on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that's what a lot of people this past year been trying to. I, I was experiencing a lot of that. I felt like the universe was sending me some people for the last couple of times, like like to see if I believe in any of that. And I was like, bro, I don't need that. I'm making a podcast. Like, oh, I know you. I record about. my own music, but people was like, hey man, we, we could put you on. I'm like, no, I'm already putting my cell phone, brother. I, I don't believe in none of that. I could nah. put you on, maybe, like, because I'm in that position now. Like, feel me? Like, I, I'm sharing energy. Like, I don't need nobody. Like, and then a lot of times people be trying to put you on and play the little. Big me, little you shit. Like, I don't play that with people. I don't never play with people like I'm bigger than them and I'm trying to help them out. Like, that's insane. Nah. Feel me? Like, <laughs> like why why people play these mental games? I have no idea what's going on in people's silly minds. Because but. once again, as we, when we first was talking, uh, there's, there's, there's knowing and then there's just copying. Yeah, and I think so a lot of people a lot just copy of, on how to yeah. deal with relationships and communication. They seen another guy punk down on another guy and they said, that's what you That's doing. what it is. And yeah. it worked for him. But it you don't know if it worked for, for you because you didn't follow that motherfucker home. Yeah, to that too. What's it, going it might on. look like it worked for him in that moment. Yeah, but 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 is he really building real relationships that no. are sustainable? No. Not like that. Not with force. No. Nah. Forcing shit. Yeah, that's. Yeah. 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 Forcing shit. <laughs> Never not building go. no sustainable nah. Force and power are two different things. Yeah. In fact, there's a book called Force Versus Power. Yeah. Uh, you can download it on PDF for free. Anyone want to go Google? Uh, force uh, versus power very good book it'll break down to you the elements of for force that's a, that's a robert green book or i don't remember his name man but it was a really insightful book and he even shows you the different levels of energy like and love is really not the highest frequency it's i think authenticity it's authenticity yeah, yeah. it's actually so the book breaks down with a color grid yeah like as you move fall out of fear too. and as you move into this then you begin to become this person, and so more power flows into you. Yeah, you and know? then you're in a, in a state of um, constant being and becoming. Yeah. So then, once you hit that state, like you're not limited no more to like oh, I'm just gonna just be this and do that. Nah. You're always seeing possibilities and solutions to things. Like, nah, we could do it this way. And you're always we're willing to take it. responsibility. Most people don't know responsibility is power. power. Oh, Man, my goodness. The minute you say. I'm responsible. He took responsibility for putting us together on this podcast. You get what I'm saying? This was his mission. Mm -hmm. And he was like, hey, I want to do this. And I had wanted to do it, but I had other things going on. And we sat down and chopped it up. And he said, you know what? I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going to figure it out. And at the time, we didn't even know what we would do it or any of that. But because he, the minute he said, I'm going to take responsibility, a bunch of shit showed up, bro. Man. Yeah, I'll tell you all this shit. <laughs> now, now we on the- Words manifest. Yeah, now totally. we on with yeah. this, like the sixth episode, seventh yeah. episode, so I think did. so. He took responsibility yeah. and the power showed up and, and the magnetism and anything else you want to call it. That you need you know, to make it happen. Totally. You just got to put your focus and your mind on it and say like, like you said, it's, this, it's, it's saying that word, man, because all our words are spells. So we got to really- taking that account too that like when you use words like accountability it's strengthened it look up the definition yeah look up the like, etymology look at the etymology of words like all these words that we're using the worst word i could say that's like for people don't say is can't 
Remove that from or me. hate. Yeah, or hate. Remove that. That's a heavy statement. These are low numerology words too. Yeah. So when you put these words on the numerology, short, they yeah. terrible words. Yeah, they terrible words. They like, little dead. They and it's so it's such a it's such a terrible word that when most people say I can't, if you ask them in a sentence, like retract thirty seconds, if you stop them what they say and be like, Hey, what did you just say? I guarantee you they won't remember that they, you know, told themselves that they could they can't do some shit. They won't remember that they told you that in that sentence. Like, oh man, I just can't change that about myself. And then stop them right there and ask them, what did you just say right now? And they'll read off everything that they said in the past 30 seconds except for that can't. Because that's how deep the spell is on that word. Like that's how good the <laughs> It's the, like a mind eraser. As yeah, you no, it's a mind eraser as you use it, my nigga. It's like some real hypnotism in some of these words down here. Like, yeah, like the minute like black hate. zap. Like cause zap think about hate. Off. What did you just say? <laughs> yeah, it's just like that. Because when people say they hate something, they delve deep into it. They really think like they dislike it. That's why I don't use that word no more. Yeah, I don't use hate anymore. I always just be like, that's not for me. Or I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that. Yeah. Can is gone. Not. 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 Felt. Or I'd be like, I ain't feeling it. I'm not feeling it. Or... I would really even fine. say no. A lot of times I tell people, let me think about it. Give me some time. I still use no. I got to use no. I think no is. It depends. No is fine. If it's, if it's like something I'm solid, I know I ain't fucking with that, then it's going to be a no. Well, yes and no have to exist in the simulation. Yeah. Because that's- It's one and zero. Well, yes, yeah, one and zero. It's binary code. <laughs> yeah. So you got to have one. You got to have yes and no. Yeah, that's it's binary like the, it's the sun and the moon. It's one and zero. Yeah, yeah, totally. So you got to have- The sun those. is the one, the moon yeah, is the zero. Yeah. Now, you see a lot of people, they don't have the ability to exercise, like how you said, when it's time to say no to something. Yeah, because they ain't got the true clarity and the proper discernment. Plus, they're the afraid they might discernment. need you. Yeah, that too. See, there's a, a lot, lot of relationships. relationships. Based on, yeah, based I can't on tell him the truth because I might need him later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, guarantee. Yeah. I swear to God. I might need him later. And it's about with anybody. It's like, this one person in my life got to telling me about their family and stuff and relationships, and it was like, but whoop de whoop holler at whoop de whoop all the time. And and I'm like, well, you don't really know what that relationship built off of. Just you on the outside, you thinking it's based off love, but their relationship might be based off need because they both doing shit for each other. So as one of them stop doing that shit, the relationship might just crumble. Yeah, totally. If either one of them stop doing, right. you know, because it's not, if it's based off love, unconditional love at that, then if one person falls short sometimes, the other person ain't going to stop giving. They just going to wait for the other person to build back up and be able to do their part again. Or whatever the case may be. Whatever they, they situation that they got going on. Feel me? The scenario is. Feel me? But most people shit is based off need. Like, I need you to shoot me this $100 a month every time you living with me for this, you know? <laughs> I need you to make sure you had this hundred dollars a month or whatever while you staying here with me or whatever. And as soon as a motherfucker ain't got that hundred dollars one month, the love nah, disappeared. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> love disappeared. Like, totally, hey, totally. nigga, you might have to find somewhere new to stay. Like, damn, nigga, it's been twenty four hours. <laughs> nigga, twenty four. Where did the love go in twenty four <laughs> damn hours? God damn, it was never there. It was always based off that hundred dollars, the need of that hundred dollars or whatever. Plus, you have to be able to build love from inside out. Yeah. So if you, let's just say taking men and women, for instance, on both sides, normally both people, let's say they fall in love. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a certain feeling of dopamine being released in magnetism. Yeah. Maybe that lasts three, four years. Then somewhere in there, either one of them, it doesn't matter who, male or female, mm -hmm. kind of pulls away a little bit. Um, Cause they're not getting that same level of dopamine release, and so okay. so they believe the they're able to fill their own void we, totally. So then the other high. person starts to feel like they're pulling away from me. They're not giving me enough. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, you should be your own fountain of love so that you have love to share. Yeah, totally. Not I'm coming to get love. No, you're supposed to come and give give love. love. Like people don't realize if everybody was giving, everybody gonna get. Talk. But if you show up to relationships and encounters with people and you looking to get, you ain't going to get nothing because you walking up with your hand out. You're in need. You're in need. You're in need. Dang, it look pathetic. And Even the if people don't want to say it to you. And the only thing pathetic. you need is bread. What I am noticing a lot of you out here, though, lately, is that I mean, it's a, it's a shortage on food. It's too much dick out here and not enough food from <laughs> what I'm experiencing with these ladies. <laughs> yeah. They ready for you to take them out on a date, but they're not ready to suck any caca. Bend over. <laughs> but they ready for you to go open up that wallet to go to fucking Olive Garden anywhere. Roof Chris. Feel me like. <laughs> feel me. Maestros. You know the good stuff. Whatever she wants to eat. But it's just it's just real funny to me because I had a lady tell me. She was like, I'm not I'm not interested in having sex. She's like, I just want to just wanna, um, have fun and go eat. 
And I'm like, well, I swiped on you to have sex. Like, well, that's the app I'm on. Yeah, that's the app the, I'm on. This app, the is, app is not an uh, eating said, service. It, she said, it's yeah. a lot of dick out here. And, uh, <laughs> I was like, so it's but, not enough food. She yeah. didn't say it wasn't enough food, but that's how I took it. I was like, yeah, yeah. so it's too much dick and not enough food. Not enough food. People are malnourished, I see. You know what we need to do? All the women are malnourished. <laughs> They're not getting <laughs> enough food. Now, look, <laughs> this, this demands a solution, and I have it. Absolutely. We need to make food that's shaped like a dick. That way, they that way we more accessible to women. That way, we basically deal with both markets at the same time. Absolutely, you know. we corner them both. Yeah, merge it together. Yes, make it one stream yeah. income. Yes, totally. <laughs> so now you have food <laughs> shaped like a penis, <laughs> and now we have we have plenty of food and dick supply. Yeah, moving in tandem. Moving in tandem. <laughs> Load the trucks up, Vinny. Load them up. <laughs> Bucket. Back up the kibasas, but I mean, all of that should be expected. Yeah. You know, in the time we well, it's in, to be expected because they like geared the minds of men and women in this day and age for men to just purely look at women is only useful for their bodies, and that's it. So men ain't trying to get to know women no more. They not asking them real questions like what, how did you, how were you raised, like was your daddy in your life, and all this type of shit. And the yeah. same thing for women. Women have been geared to just value a man for whatever his resources are so she's never really asking him how did you raise that are you abusive did you grow up in an abusive household how do you view women or do you have a good relationship with your mama and your daddy and feel me so both parties are never getting to know each other because both parties keep on trying to come in and get she trying to yeah. get a free meal he trying to get some pussy and some mouth and some head you've been objectified. She trying to get a meal you've been objectified yeah we've been objectified she's a wild now, they're like for, the for simple things, yeah, you know what I mean? like, instead of like actually genuinely caring about the person, it's yeah. incentive based. And then people want to sit do? there and pretend that they care. They they want to do the merry go round. And I'm like through with the merry go round. Like nah. I could tell when a woman don't want to get to know me. And so it's like if you ain't asking me no questions, let's get to the fucking, let's get to the fun because I'm here for fun. Yeah. Like I don't want to pretend like I don't want to sit. I'm here and ask for a you, good time, not a long. Time. Yeah, man. Like and, and like feel me. Like let's <laughs> not here for a long time. Yeah, let's just call it what it is. Like I feel like I feel like y'all gonna be. I feel like sometimes leave, like out here like the consciousness level like people be mad that they can't meet you on everything. Like, but baby, if you can't fulfill me um, spiritually, physically, and mentally, if all you can fulfill for me is a nut, which is physical, just, let's both just be happy with that. You ain't got to... Yeah, I'm not putting any extra pressure. Yeah, I ain't putting no extra pressure for you to know know my whole life story and know my know me spiritually and feel me, know, know my background and all this type of shit. Nah. And, and, and especially if you're not genuinely trying to do it. If you're not making the effort, I could tell. Yeah. So it's but like, I'm not going to make an effort to try to get to know you all that. I just want to fuck. Let's get to that. Like <laughs> Put some effort in yeah, that. Yeah, let's waste yeah. the time. But if, if there's something genuine there, yeah. then we can get to know each other. Feel me? But I feel really like people the, waste too much time. It's really time. on the woman to want to do that, too. Yeah, and it's really on the, the woman. woman the woman brings the spark you. to that yeah, shit. Because she the energy. You. She the energy in motion. She the moon. We the sun. We the magnetism. She has to say she wants to get to know you, know you and show real interest. Yeah. And if that's not... Because a man going to be a man. A man going to want to fuck regardless if I get to know you or not. Because you're yeah. a beautiful woman and I'm in my man mode. I'm a, mm. It's my nature. Yeah, totally. I find you attractive. I don't need more than that. Nature women, is Women need more than that. Yeah. Feel me? <laughs> well, they were created to. Yeah, to that way. it's just how we was wired by God. God made me this way, baby. I'm sorry. Well, that's a, that's what we're take it up with management. Too. You got to call HR. <laughs> you got to call HR. Call the man upstairs. Tell them you don't like how they make men. Yeah, it's all. You got to tell God, and for the men that don't like how they, how God made women, you better call HR and tell tell God your complaints. Yeah. I love women the way the fuck they are. Yeah. I'm just telling you, I I'm a psychologist and I analyze consciousness a lot. I'm more than a rapper. I'm a shaman, psychologist. Yeah. I wear many hats. I wear many hats. So I study a lot of things and I study people a lot in my conversations with them. So yeah, ultimately this is a laboratory. Yeah. In which you're you're testing different things to figure out what's gonna work for you. Totally. And then you even those things that work, everything works until it doesn't. Yep. So what could let it work for that era? Yeah, or that, let for, it that work for that time. Era or that time, and then when yeah, it, it might be it might work for two months, nigga. Let, don't try to use it into the third or the fourth month. If it looks like it's failing, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. What can you replace it with? Yeah. Or does it even need replacing? Maybe that was just a one off for a while. Yeah, and you just had to get some growth and knowledge from that real quick, totally. and some money from that real totally. quick, or whatever. But so, like sometimes people try to make a one off a lifetime. Well, remember, a lot of people are distracted. They're pulled outside of themselves on a regular basis. Like the like the DVD man, he tried to make that a lifetime. Yeah, 
Yeah. But it was a one off. Streaming. Kill. It was it's for error. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, a one off, but it was for error. Great. It was for like exactly. 10 years. It lasted for like 10, 13 years. And then once it hit about 2015, streaming platforms was, was fully popular. It was it. Yeah. The DVD man disappeared. Yeah. I stopped buying DVDs. Like that was the last time I bought a um a self made DVD. No, totally. It was totally. 2015. Well, one day, I, one day I bought one off a guy, and it was so blurry. Instead of calling him up, because he was my dude, he yeah. was my dude. He'd be, "Oh my bad, you know, I, I bring, I replace you, you, get you, I replace one. you, no trip." And I just thought about it, and I was like, "Do I really like looking at movies in this quality? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what am I? No, I hold that. They're releasing movies faster. Just do, the movies I'm is coming totally out faster. All like together. it made sense in early two thousands because it took like a year for the movie to come out on DVD. But movies. The, the movie hit the movie theater and then it hit the Amazon or whatever, Netflix in like two months, three months. Yeah. It's in your house. Yeah. Some movies come out a, a week or two afterwards. Yeah. So it's shit. like you can get it for three ninety nine, nine ninety nine, dollars yeah. and, and eat your and eat your real food at home in front yeah, of you. Yeah, smoke people. a blunt in front of you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Eat some mushrooms in front of you. You ain't got to sneak the food in nah, none of know, that. and do all that extra. Yeah. You know. Nah, that's real. Well. Well, we're going to bring it to a close, y'all. We appreciate y'all coming in with us today. We appreciate you coming on the show today, Reef. For sure, though, man. For sure. Man. Thankful for man. y'all having me. You've been a man. great guest, man. Man, would you sure. would you come back on the show, God of Reef, man? When once your success oh, builds up and your your music blows up, man, and people streaming your music like crazy. Definitely, man. Coming more oh, the bananas, man. I, I not know only go bananas at bananas now. Not only will I come back, I'm bring the team with me, you know. Shout out to the FEMA camp. Yeah. My MIE, David Wave, my man Travel. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we got a bunch of projects on uh, Spotify, Apple Music, all online. Just type FEMA Camp and put a K on it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, we, we I think we're going to be winning, man. Our next show is uh, March 29th in Long Beach. Absolutely. So, uh, so y'all be on the lookout for that. March 29th in Long Beach. What time? Um, I don't have all the details yet. Um, okay, okay. Can they check out your gram? Yeah, yeah, it'll be yeah. The updates will be coming on the gram. Follow them um, for the updates. Let them know. Yeah, what time again, what uh, yeah. The, you can follow me at Arif Khomeini, A R E E F K H O M E I N I. That's on the Insta. You know, I got the TikTok. It's the God Arif I T Z, the God Arif. All the, together, one you know, one and nine letters that'll change you ever forever your life. You know what? However, the rhyme was I used to say. I forgot how I said it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a rhyme for that. It was like five or six letters that'll change your life forever. You know, yeah. hey, I think that was it though. That's yeah, there we go. Yeah, I forgot how I said five it. Five or six letters that'll change your life forever. No, that was it. I think you that was it. You saying? found it. <laughs> you know, so yeah, um, we got we got plenty in the works. And again, bananas is in the works. Um, planning to go to uh, to Detroit uh, this year. Hopefully, oh, you gonna like the D. The D is yeah. bomb. I've been to Detroit. About yeah, it. man. Um, holla at him, man. When he in the D, man. If anybody want to work with God of Reef, holla at him. Yeah, we, yeah, we're gonna be tapping in with with some official cats. Um, uh, I'm going to Arizona, I believe, for Cinco de Mayo. Shout out to my Arizona peoples, uh, Hormi Ghetto, my man out there, um, my man Kyrum and stuff. You know, uh, I, I, I be at Thunder Canyon. That's a popular spot. I've been going there for like the past five years, actually. This is in Arizona. Yeah. Okay. Every Cinco de Mayo, I be lit, man. Hell yeah, yeah. Be lit, man. Cinco de Mayo, uh, hey, Halloween. I want to drive over there too, see what it looked like. Hell yeah, that's a good road trip. I ain't never been to Arizona. Oh yeah, Arizona oh, that's cool, man. man. I know Arizona rock. got some um, beautiful women. I was talking to a girl off the internet, like when yeah. I was on Facebook a lot. I met a girl from Arizona on Facebook. She was mixed, white and Mexican. Any more shout outs, man? Um, shout out to you know people that I work with. You know my um, my day ones verbs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, DJ L. Ray, my man, Alf the Alien. Uh, yeah, like I said, the FEMA camp. Uh, shit. I don't know, man. It's too many to name, bro. Yeah, just, like, I'm, just want to hey, get man, it. Hey, got it all. The homies in the punk rock scene, my DCP homies, uh, the homies from Problem. Um, you know, just, you know, shout out to the Battle Rap Cats, my man, Conclusion. Uh, uh, yeah, the homies. Shout out to y'all. You know, shout out to my shout fam, to future, my moms, my pops. Future. You know, free my bro. Um, free him, man. Let him out that clink. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, just you know, shout out to L.A. Man, I got a, I got a yeah, lot. Y'all can a find that DB coming. Cooper song, man, on Bandcamp. Yeah, Beyond the, the Reef. Hulk. Yeah, Beyond the Band Reef. Camp. Yeah, man. And, and, Don't hesitate uh, to wait, man. Go download that. We've got we got plenty more in store. Like I say you see the beanies. You know, tap in with me. Holler at me on the Insta. You know, sometimes I send exclusive tracks. 
you know, so you never know what you might get from me. You know, it's, I just keep I keep that door open, man. Just Definitely. spontaneousness. And, nah, totally, totally keep that creative. You, know nah, you got to, man. And with that, this is featured, and it's a wrap. Peace and love. Hey. You do it again. You hit another one. <laughs> that was funny though. We'll leave we'll leave that in. We'll leave that right. in. Peace and love, y'all. Peace and love, y'all. Feature. Let's go. I'm blowing chronic smoke in the wind. Going places you've never been, accumulating dividends. Mostly Benjamins. Hey ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your attention and your subscriptions. If you have a business or a service you would like to promote. Or if you don't have one, you just want to come on the show and talk and be a guest on Featured, please DM us at Featured underscore guests on Instagram. We look forward to hearing from you and seeing you. Peace and love.